Hi, it's February 24th, uh, 2016, and it's Wednesday, uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, London, England time, or uh, 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Uh, I'll start out today uh, talking about the British Pound, and it's kind of a part two of a video I made on the 12th of January called British Pound, a Harbinger of... Uh, global financial mayhem and since then uh, you know we saw the stock market drop quite a bit since the middle of January I know it dropped quite a bit as well from the beginning of January um, and then we've been rebounding though for the last uh, week or 10 days uh, and we're actually pretty much in terms of the Dow where we were uh, on January 12th maybe a little lower we are at one, uh, you know, Dow right now, as I speak, is down 88, 16,340. And I think we're around 16,400. And one of the reasons uh, I mentioned uh, British Pound being a harbinger of uh, financial mayhem is that in the last uh, financial crisis, uh, the pound topped uh, in 2007. I think I'm not too sure 2007 2008 but it topped anyways above two to the dollar like I think it was 212 so one pound was worth two dollars twelve and uh, once the crisis came in 08 and 09 the pound kind of actually started dropping before the stock market started dropping and the pound dropped all the way down to 134.98 uh, and since you know, 09, the pound is kind of rebounded and done well. And we went up all the way uh, to, yeah, like 171.50 in July of 2014. And since then, it's been pretty much uh, one way street uh, downwards in the pound. So we've dropped from 171.50, almost 172, and we're now below 140. Uh, right now, as I speak, uh, the pound is at 139.35. So we're very close to that low from, uh, you know, the financial crisis, post-financial crisis or during the financial crisis of 135. And in my previous video on the, on the 12th of January, I, I showed a, a huge uh, head and shoulder formation uh, that was forming in the British pound going back a few years. And I'm looking at that, uh, you know, head and shoulder formation. And as you can see, uh, we broke through the neckline in January. And then uh, beginning of February, uh, we went back to the neckline. And as you can see, um, this neckline was a huge resistance for the pound. And finally, it's turned around. And collapse is starting to kind of collapse the pound and uh, my objective for the neckline was around 125 to the dollar for the pound I think we could even see it drop further and a lot of people are talking about you know saying that it's because the UK is going to leave uh, the European Union you know we're gonna have the referendum on the 23rd uh, that has probably an impact but I think this has started way earlier, you know, in July of 2014, you know, uh, I think the weakening currency is more a symptom of economic mismanagement of the UK economy. And I'm not blaming, uh, you know, Osborne and the Conservatives particular, you know, in particular, I'm blaming the whole establishment because it was under labor that, you know, we ran up all the debts, we we let the, the banks go, you know, wild. And then, you know, they collapsed and then we had to bail them out. And uh, I don't think the conservatives changed anything. They said, you know, people say, oh, they've introduced austerity. They've cut, uh, you know, they've cut the spending and, and, and all that. But they haven't cut spending. What they have cut were the projections uh, that, were uh, provided by the previous chancellor, Darling, you know, for increases. Uh, you know, let's say if they, he said, oh, in 2016, uh, NHS uh, spending will increase by 5%. 
all Osborne did is said, oh, I'm going to cut it to an increase of 4%. So there were actually no cuts. And the national debt is still more than double since the conservatives have been in power. Uh, we were supposed to have, according to Osborne, uh, you know, a few years ago, we were supposed to be in surplus already, our budget deficit, but we're not. You know, the uh, deficit data that came out a week or two ago, they're still behind schedule. So we're still running a huge, uh, you know, relatively big deficit in the UK. So the national debt is increasing. Um, I think the economic data are not good. You know, they, it's the same story here about unemployment. They, as in the US, they say, oh, the unemployment rate has dropped, you know, everything's fine. But, you know, there's so many people having part-time jobs though now and earning a lot less. So I, I don't think there's any economic recovery. Uh, so yeah, maybe Brexit, or, you know, the UK e leaving the EU might be having an impact on this, but I, I think it's more uh, of a symptom of mismanagement and all the QE that the Bank of England has done to save the banks and keep them from, you know, collapsing. Uh, if we had let you know, the collapse really happened in a way, we'd probably be recovering by now. We wouldn't have as much debt as a nation. Um, so, yeah, I think they're using this EU uh, referendum as an excuse for a very deep recession uh, that's upcoming in the UK, if not, if it's not here already. And, uh, you know, if they can always say, oh, it's because of the uncertainty surrounding our uh, referendum to stay in the EU. They'll use that as an excuse. Uh, and they'll, they'll say the pound dropped because of that. But I think it, it's not that simple. And uh, the other thing I wanted to tell uh, people in Britain is that they need to prepare for rising cost of living. Uh, and I don't use the word inflation because uh, we're not going to experience inflation. We're going to experience rising prices. And you might, might say, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is that inflation is not rising prices. Inflation is what causes rising prices. It's the inflation of the currency is what we're getting now. You know, that our currency is going down because too much, too many British pounds are being produced or printed and created uh, compared to the dollar and other currencies. And that's why it's going down. It's being inflated away. And, you know, everything you buy in the UK is priced in British pounds. So if the British pound is going down, that naturally means every, you know, everything you buy is going up. Uh, usually it takes a bit of a lag. So, you know, but I, I expect by the end of this year, you know, things to be a lot more expensive, you know, especially things you need like food, uh, you know, utilities, uh, rents, uh, tuition, um, all the necessary uh, things to, to survive, I think. The prices of these things are going to go up because, you know, the way I'm looking at the British pound, it's really being, uh, you know, debauched uh, by the, uh, you know, the people who run this country, the Bank of England and the, the Treasury. They're really, uh, you know, this is by design, in my opinion. And uh, the other, uh, yeah, thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Donald Trump. Uh, I usually don't really talk too much about politics, but, uh, you know, Donald P Trump uh, was considered a joke about 12 months ago uh, as, a, you know, candidate for president or candidate for the nomination of the Republican Party. But, uh, you know, he's whipping everyone, you know, he's like killed off uh, Jeb Bush, you know. Jeb Bush spent $130 million and he couldn't even get through the first few states in the primaries and he's out. Uh, you know, I think uh, he, Donald Trump, might say a few things that seem a bit silly, but on the whole, I think he comes out as a regular person. I know he's a billionaire, but he, he doesn't talk like a career politician, you know, and 
you know, that people are sick and tired of. He, he tells it like it is, and uh, people like that. And um, yeah, I think he could be the real deal, even though I do not trust politicians uh, generally or on the whole. <laughs> Uh, I thought Ron Paul was genuine, uh, but he lacked the charisma and the uh, public, uh, you know, public persona of Donald Trump. So, you know, I think both of them, Ron Paul and Donald Trump, are genuine. And uh, it looks, you know, uh, that uh, Donald Trump is a political... Uh, phenomenon that could, uh, you know, change things uh, in a big way. And that's what I wanted to talk about. We need to keep an eye on the U.S. presidential elections, not just for the U.S., but for the whole world. You know, uh, I read an article by uh, Bob Moriarty of 321gold.com, and he thinks that, uh, you know, the end of empire is here, you know, U.S. empire and uh, he could be right. And uh, he, he didn't really rate Trump uh, that much in his, uh, this article he wrote. But I think Trump is actually coming out. Uh, and he's questioning a lot of things, you know, about 9-11. He wants the 28-page document that hasn't been uh, published, uh, come out publicly. You know, he wants that to come out. And apparently that, you know, puts the blame so up. Uh, on Saudi Arabia, who are allies of the U.S., you know, and uh, that would be a huge story, um, the 9-11 story, you know, the, tr the, the truth about 9-11. And um, I don't talk about this usually, but I think it's very important. It could change the world, I th and I think for the better, because since 9-11, you know, the world's changed completely. You know, we don't have the freedoms we had. You know, when you go to the airport, they make take make you take your belt off, your boots. You know, it's like horrible. So, and all the wars that it's triggered. You know, um, the uh, idea of the new American century uh, by the neocons. That's what 9/11 triggered. You know, it gave America carte blanche to go and like disrupt the Middle East. So by coming out and questioning 9-11 and the Bush, uh, W. Bush administration and the Bush family in general, I think is huge. And um, so, and that could have, you know, that could have great effect, not only on the political landscape, but on the financial landscape. So, you know, that's a very important uh, subject, I think, to keep an eye on. It's going to be the most important, uh, you know, development of 2016, in my opinion. And now there's also talk that uh, Donald Trump would, uh, you know, be for auditing the Federal Reserve. And that's quite big as well. You know, they've tried to uh, get bills through Congress and the Senate, but they've never passed. And, uh, yeah, I, I think this could be huge, you know, and keep an eye on Trump. And hopefully, uh, you know, he won't be taken out. <laughs> uh, have a good day. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.